Hello everyone and welcome specially to this channel. One of the things we know about plants is that they make their own food by themselves. You know, green plants make their food by a process called photosynthesis. Unlike animals, including humans, we have to depend on plants for our food, whether directly or indirectly. But you see, there are these other plants that apart from making their own food by themselves, they also depend on small animals. They also feed on small animals. And we call these plants carnivorous plants or insectivorous plants. You know, insectivorous because they feed on insects. Now, I know a lot of us will now be asking, so why do these plants feed on animals? And how do they even go about it? So we're going to discuss all of that and more in this video. But before then, if you have not subscribed to this channel, kindly do that now. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. You know, that way you let us know that what we're doing is making sense. I'll be motivated to do more of this kind of videos. So if you're ready, let's jump into it. So what are these carnivorous plants? First and foremost, they are plants. In other words, they make their food by themselves. But you see, because where these plants are found, there is shortage of nutrients, especially nitrogen. And you know that plants require nitrogen to make their proteins. So because of that, these plants have evolved the ability to extract nitrogen from animals around them. And what they do is that they capture these animals, digest them, and extract nitrogen and other nutrients from them. Now, there are two common examples of these plants, and we're going to discuss both of them in this video. Let's start with the first one, the pitcher plant. If you look at the pitcher plant, it has its leaves modified into a pitcher or cavity, you know, and inside this cavity, you find digestive fluid. But at the top of the cavity, you know, at the rim, you find nectar that is sweet, that attracts insects. This rim is also slippery. So when an insect perches on the rim, it slips into the pitcher and gets drowned in the digestive fluid. So even while the insect is still alive, the digestive enzymes in the fluid will begin to break down the body of this insect. And at the end of the day, the nutrients from this insect will be absorbed by the pitcher plant. The second one is the Venus flytrap. The Venus flytrap also has its leaves, you know, modified into a trap. This trap is made up of two lobes. On each of these lobes, you also have sweet attracting substance, maybe call it nectar, which also attract insects to it. But on these lobes, on the surface of these lobes, you find hair-like structures. We call them the trigger hairs. Now, when insects perch on these lobes, when they step on these trigger hairs, they activate the lobe to snap shot, thereby trapping the insect within the lobes. And when this happens, the digestive enzymes from inside these lobes also get emptied upon the body of the insect, digesting the insect and extracting nutrients from it, which the plant also absorbs. Now, there are other examples of plants like this. You have the sundew plant, you have the bladderwort, and so on and so forth. So that is why these plants are called carnivorous plants. And like I stated earlier, that is not their principal mode of feeding. They make their own food by themselves. But because of the need for them to get in more nutrients into their system, they have to feed on small animals. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not. Don't also forget to click the notification so that the next time we post a video here, you will see it first. See you in our next video.